Ignition flight. Apollo 13 would be America's third trip to the moon in less than a year. By April of 1970, four astronauts had already walked on the lunar surface. Launch day. The crew of Apollo 13, Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert were settled in and safely on their way, or so they thought. This is the crew of Apollo 13, with everybody there. Uh, nice evening. Pleasant words from a confident captain, Jim Lovell. But minutes later, when a routine instruction from Houston arrived, everything would change. 13, we've got one more item for you when you get a chance. We'd like it to uh, stir up your cryo tanks. Seconds after Jack Swigert flipped the appropriate switch, all aboard suspected trouble. I was in the lunar module when I heard this bang. And this thing shook back and forth. And so I, I looked up at, at Fred to see if he knew what caused this noise. And I could tell from the expression on his face that he had no idea. Is that when you get on the radio? Now, Houston, we have a problem here. Houston, we've had a problem. <laughs> uh, understatement if we ever said it. Huh? An oxygen tank exploded in the service module, the part of the spacecraft which was supposed to power them to the moon and back. At what point do you know you're in deep, deep trouble? When I looked out the window, after the tank blew, I saw all the oxygen escaping. We are venting something out uh, into the uh, into space. The explosion, nearly catastrophic. On the ground and in the spacecraft, there was only one mission now, getting the astronauts home. It would require every ounce of ingenuity NASA could muster. Afraid? Lovell says yes, they were. But we didn't say anything. We said, you know, here's the situation. Here's what we got to work with. For the crew to return safely to Earth, they needed to shut down the command service module to save its power. The lunar module would become their lifeboat, but not before Lovell scribbled down critical navigational data. I called to talk to the mission control people. Would you check my arithmetic? <laughs> Make sure. You had to do this all manually. Oh, yeah. Is this like pencil on paper? Did you have a... It was pencil on paper. With landing on the moon out of the question, the lunar module had a new mission, to get the crew around the moon and headed back to Earth. The lunar module is built for how many people? The lunar module is built for two people for two days. And you had how many people? Three people for four days. I counted them. <laughs> Three men crammed into the space for two began to overload the ventilation system. The astronauts were in danger of suffocating on the carbon dioxide produced by their own breath. And the filter from the crippled command module, useless. You can't put a square canister into an oblong hole in the lunar module system. On the ground, engineers at Mission Control jury-rigged a solution with stuff they knew was on board, including an old sock, the cover of a manual, and lots and lots of duct tape. Incredibly, it worked. And so I thought you'd like to, like to know that don't leave home without it. <laughs> so you have several days in the lunar module on the way back to Earth. What was it like in there? The lunar module was cold, and it got colder all the time. All we did was hang in there. We, did, we slept. Uh, we slept just standing up. The hours seemed endless, but eventually it was time to prepare for re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. When the service module was jettisoned, the astronauts eyeballed the damage. And in one whole spot of that thing, uh, Is that right? What else, they wondered, in the explosion might have been damaged. Did you think, well, this explosion happened? I wonder if something happened to your heat shield. Oh, yeah. During the re-entry burn, communication with Houston was impossible. For four minutes, America held its breath. Apollo 13 should be uh, out of blackout at this time. Four minutes that turned into five. Standing by for any reports. Then six. Odyssey Houston standing by over. Okay, we read you, Jack. What was it like when you splashed down? We hit the water 
and the water splashed over the window. We all breathed a sigh of relief. We shook each other's hand. Happiest moment of my life to see them come down. It's the greatest feeling since man landed on the moon, really. And to be as cool as you all seem to be under such enormous pressure, you talk about the right stuff. Sometimes I think about that myself. Why were we so cool? We just didn't know the situation. <laughs> but if you had the chance to do it all over again, it sounds like... I would do it. ...in a heartbeat. That's exactly right. One of the great good fortunes of this job is being able to meet people like Jim Lovell. And one of the great parts of the Jim Lovell story is once they got home, he's with the other astronauts doing a news conference. And somebody says, gee, do you miss having had the opportunity to walk on the moon? Would you go back into space? And he starts to clear his throat to say, yes. And he looks out in the audience and his wife is out there with the thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> but what a story Amazing. in terms of these guys are in the fix to end all fixes. There's nothing logically that says they can get back around the room, the moon, which is its own very difficult maneuver, let alone a 5,000 degree re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere and make it home in one piece. That shows it's such a lesson some real right stuff. now. Yes, Amen. yes, totally. You know. Yeah, because it's like we were talking at the beginning of the hour that looking back, especially in a moment of hardship like right now, to look at something like Apollo 13 where you could argue, well, that's a situation where everything went wrong. But it was at that precise moment that this true genius came forward. And I think that's so inspiring for right now, Harry. Absolutely. It's, it's the collaboration. It's being able to keep your composure. That's that's absolutely, uh, absolutely for sure. And what an example, though, from the standpoint of if you're home, you're stuck at home with your kids. Maybe there's school. Maybe there's not school. This is something you can Google. There are amazing documentaries mm -hmm. about Apollo 13, let alone the great movie with Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Harry. Thanks, oh, Harry. Great idea. Thank you, Harry. And just Take ahead. Care, guys.